This training course familiarizes employees with some of the tools available to assist in the event of a physical emergency. To do so, we'll walk through an example emergency and refer to some of the materials that the corporation provides to ensure your safety. The scenario we will use is DSN 000682-B. The subject of this scenario, Proximate Workspace Rapid Oxidation Event, or as it's more commonly known, my cubicle is on fire. It's important to bear in mind that this scenario is for a life-threatening event, i.e. it's not a small fire that could be readily extinguished, but a, rather a major conflagration that threatens your life and potentially the life of everyone in the building. Fortunately, the Life Safety Group provides a number of helpful standards and processes for just such scenarios. As you may already know, many of these have been pulled together in the WAMU Life Safety Guide. Now, if you're having a life-threatening situation, you shouldn't need the Life Safety Guide to tell you that time is of the essence. So in an emergency like a fire, of course, it's critical that you immediately drop whatever you're doing and absolutely as quickly as possible. Enter a service station request for an emergency evacuation planning form. This will go to your manager for approval and then be promptly fulfilled via interoffice mail. Now, I know we agree that a critical emergency is no time for errors in your paperwork. So it's critical that you follow the corporate emergency escape methodology. This brief training course cannot cover all the documents you will need in the event of a real emergency. But most of these are just common sense. And you should be familiar with these from your Atlas training. This presentation will instead focus on just a few areas where people are particularly prone to errors and confusion. First, although it is perfectly understandable that people would be impatient in an emergency, this is no excuse for lack of professionalism. For example, in this change request submitted to remove a person from a building while it is burning, the user entered a summary of get the F word out of the building and a description of cubicle on fire, get my A word out of here. I don't need to tell you that this language is totally inappropriate. Of course, if the emergency happens to occur on a Friday, please enter your loss in time before leaving the building. You'll want to contact your manager and have them add the appropriate categories to your work list. In this example, other obstacles, lack of a non-flaming workspace. And please make sure that your escape time is billed to the appropriate project. It is important to know the order in which you should help to evacuate people and property to safety. And of course, it's people first. More specifically, executives, level sixes and higher, followed by level seven and eight employees, and all other employees and visitors. If you have additional time, remove the vital documents and critical data. Next, the valuable electronics and furnishings, and consultants. For a quick overview of the emergency evacuation process, you should review the handy process chart in the emergency guide. Now, if you are viewing this presentation in a large room, it is likely that people in the back cannot see this too well. From our experience, these people are generally level sevens and lower, so this should not be a major problem. If you have a question in the midst of an actual emergency, such as, where is the emergency exit on this floor? There's a handy email address you can post these to. Send your request to GMWAMU OCA BCP Employee Life Safety Emergency Request at WAMU.net. You may, make, may want to make a mental note of this. Be sure to use the current emergency question template. Answers to these emergency questions will be provided immediately as soon as they are completed. Here is a standard process for completing an emergency answer. The candidate answer is proposed by the emergency operator. This is reviewed by the Emergency Answer Oversight Committee. The answer is then vetted by the EPRG, the Emergency Project Review Group. Assuming that goes well, the answer goes to the Answer Delivery Gateway Meeting, sponsored by the CPO. 
Then your answer is sent to the corporate communications group for expedited delivery. Now that you've taken the course, it's time to test your knowledge. Here's a test question. A crazed Carmelite nun, armed with hand grenades and multiple semiotic weapons, bursts into your office and screams that she has a bomb under her habit. What should you do first? Contact marketing to determine if she is associated with StodgyBanker.com. Check Wamu.net for e-stories on bomb diffusing and interfaith problem solving. Update your career development plan and talent builder to reflect missing appendages and a long hospital stay. Or inform the nun that you cannot kiss your blank goodbye without an appropriate project number. The answer, of course, is all the above. You have now successfully concluded the WAMU Emergency Preparation Training, so the system should now automatically update your records. Thank you for your time, and have a safe workday.